I have posted the first video of this car. Many have commented that it looks just like the 66 Biscayne and Dirty Mary and Crazy Larry. That was from 1974. I had heard of the title of that movie. I have never seen it. Never knew the premise of it, so I looked it up. And uh, sure enough, it's this color. And I'm just thinking maybe somewhere back in the day, somebody decided they wanted to paint this car to look like that movie. Anyway, these are some standard Chevy rallies from the 70s. Now, no Biscayne would be complete without standard rims and dog dish hubcaps. We're just going to take it a step further. <laughs> Get on there! Ow, that hurts! I'm liking it. I still think the dog dish would be better, but I'm liking it. Well, I did it. I dove into my much dreaded exhaust work. And this was definitely stuck shut. But if you find out that if you raise this up off of the pipe, why, it's completely free. No problem. Until you put it down on the pipe like that, then it don't open no more. So there's the matter of that donut inside that pipe. So I'm thinking, wonder if there's different size donuts I'm just gonna have to pull this down. Get that flange off of there. It's a high spec person should take care of that problem. I know, just torch the butterfly out of it like Kenny wants to do. I don't wanna do that. Hey, what do you know it was leaking there? Who'd have guessed? Now this particular gasket is made to go up into the manifold. She would drive it up into the manifold. Necessarily drive it, but it's a snug fit, should be anyway. And then there's just a flange on the pipe here. Put it up against there, tighten it down, seals up, up and down. So, this is not the correct gasket. The correct gasket would be tapered both sides so it wouldn't have that ring because you've got the taper on the pipe. And you've got the taper on the donut, or on the, uh, you've got the taper on the heat riser. I know. A lot of you would just do what Kenny said. Just take it out of there. I ain't gonna. I just ain't gonna. So as you can see, all I was accomplishing was bending that butterfly, which is why I stopped. All right. At least we know how to fix it now. I think I'll straighten that butterfly out. So some of you may recall previously when I said that these are just tack welded in here. And when I was beating on this thing, I don't want to go any further because something's still stopping it, but it flaps okay, just don't seem right. And that's because we just found out why. So one half of the butterfly is locked in this vertical plane. So that means we get on this and bend it until it's parallel with that vertical plane. Then we'll have free flowing exhaust once again. And some of you may agree with Kenny. Just cut the thing out of there. No! Not gonna! The reason why it's on here 
because it is an emission control device. Now you might say, well, emission control devices, all they do is rob performance of mileage. And no, you're not correct. On a cold engine, gasoline's coming through the carburetor. Let me get this out of the way so I don't confuse you. Gasoline's coming through the carburetor, hits the bottom of the intake manifold, changes direction to where it has to go. When that intake manifold is cold, and that suspended fuel hits that, it condensates on the intake manifold and causes a stumble, or it just turns into liquid fuel and slowly makes its way into the cylinders using more fuel. So if you heat that up, it won't condense on the bottom of the intake. So therefore, you won't be putting, allowing raw fuel to travel down the runners. You'll use less fuel and you'll in Improve the performance of the engine during cold operation. There is your emission control lesson for the day. So as the engine warms up and the bimetal spring opens the butterfly, that is immeasurable restriction. Might as well not be restricted at all. After all, it is immeasurable. Can you see the haze? That's the Rum Creek fire burning out of control along the Rogue River. Well, since I'm under here and waiting for the parts to arrive, I might as well take care of this ugliness there. And might as well drop the starter down to see if I can get it shinned correctly. It never ends. It just never ends. Well, it appears that it might have been improperly shimmed. What with a shim that uh, Isn't where it's supposed to be. I don't even think these fit in here, do they? Yeah, it'll go. That means I gotta put it up in there without the shim and try it and see what it does and take it back out again if it doesn't. What to do? What to do? Well, at least I've got some new help. Two new helpers. As opposed to tune helper. Oh, let's see what happens. Well, you know that sounds better. Ooh, there goes the cat. It does sound better. I really don't want to throw the shim in there because that just moves it farther away from the flywheel. So I think I will just leave it as it is. But I'll put the. This is a high torque starter. You can tell a high torque starter because. I can get my finger in there to point it out. Standard starter. Well, high torque starter, the windings, the connector for the windings comes out back here on the starter. So you've got that spacer between the solenoid and the connection. The standard starter comes right up at the back of the solenoid. That's how you know. So, and high torque starters generally have that extra bracket. I guess I'll put it in permanently now. It's all back in place now. All the wiring tucked out of the way. Secured it where it belongs. Can't get near the exhaust. Got a washer under that bolt so you can actually get it back out now. All right, on to the next adventure, which is this. Gotta go to town, get the parts. Ah, yes. Ah, yes. Let us not forget. It fits. Install. I feel a cat. A kitten. Well, here's hoping that the... Because I can't see it. The flange will seat in that donut gasket the way it's spoda. 
really don't look like it's gonna. Hmm. Yeah, it's gonna. It does, it does. Draw them down evenly, or up evenly, whichever you prefer. <laughs> Wonderbar! Up on the house top. Click, click, click. I think I'm done under here. Starter's all back. Inspection cover's tight. Wires are loomed. Except for this one for the heater fan. There, wires are all loomed. What else was under here? Oh, radiator hose. That's next. I don't know which way this goes. Looking like maybe that way. Don't you know? Don't you know? This thing. Oh, this thing. Ah, uh, bungee cord. can't even figure out what the purpose would be of putting a block heater in this thing. I mean, I grew up in Ohio. It was cold in the winter. I didn't use any block heaters. Oh, it's going to fight me every step of the way. Every step of the way. Okay, didn't fight me on that step. But it's fighting me on this one. Try going on the other side of that stupid thing. That's more better. Oh, let's put this back on. This when your hooky pick comes in handy. I don't feel like getting up and going to get it. It is enough. Click. I'm gonna guess this car had overheat problems. And it couldn't have not had overheat problems. Click. All right, time to drop it down. Well, after the front wheels on, of course. That was a gallon of distilled water. And this used to be a gallon of antifreeze, but now it's antifreeze concentrate. Apparently, in moving the camera around, I accidentally hit the record button so that it would no longer record. We'll try it again. If it's not cold anymore. It was cold enough for that. My thermostat's 
not open anymore. So we want to see both of those open up. Oh, it's creeping. Purging. There's two gallons of distilled water in here and one gallon of concentrate antifreeze. Now when you walk into the parts store and you say you want antifreeze, they give you a jug of 50-50 mix. Leave yourself about an inch. Because cooling expands when it gets hot. Just kind of lays in the lawn right at the moment. That's thinking about opening farther. Now if you noticed, I had this apart that the shaft doesn't run through the center of the butterfly, it's offset. That's so if it has more exhaust pressure, it actually forces the butterfly open. Let's see if we can make that theory work. done that? Pretty nifty, huh? Yeah, she's moving through there at a pretty good clip now. You know, while we're doing this, let's check the blow-by. So, I'm going to remove the PCB hose and then move over here. That'll kill it when I pull it off. Pretty darn good, I'd say. Pretty darn good indeed. Run a little rich. Rich is okay. Rich is good. Rich is better than lean. I've got a special treat for you coming up, so if you want to tell me how crappy this thing's running, that's fine. You just go ahead and tell me. You'll see. Yeah, she's pretty much open at this point. That's just barely coming open. It'll go farther. It's done expanding. Kind of what we're looking for here. Coolant's done expanding and it's not purging any more air out of the block. So that coolant level is pretty much right where we want to be. Now if I just had a radiator cap, then it wouldn't boil over as soon as I shut it off. Oh yeah. Okay. So you can't read it because it's upside down. Happy? Operating temperature, I'll tell you that. I'm real curious as to whether or not the wide open throttle performance has improved. It's open a little bit. Not, we're just sitting here idling. So, you consider the normal operation of this vehicle is you're going to start it up. It's going to run for two seconds. You put it in gear and go on your way. And that exhaust is going to heat up a whole lot more than what it is right now. So, I think we ought to road trip it. Well, we ought to driveway trip it. Wow. Throttle response is significantly different. But, it's got the Marvel Mist Oil and the crankcase now. When I first took it down the driveway, I had the uh, camera on the tripod, the tripod wedged in the, into the trunk because there was no back seat in it. Uh, now I just got the camera resting on the dash. Okay, every time I drive this car, the happier it gets. So we'll see where our minimum throttle one, two upshift is, or low high upshift, I guess. About 15. Oop. Yeah, about 15. Because we want it to kick down as soon as I get through my gate here. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, oh, oh, big difference. Big difference. <laughs> okay. It's under pressure. As you can hear it leaking past the cap. No leaks in the radiator. That's K seal. Wouldn't do the heater core though. I'm liking it a lot. I'm sitting here idle and I can hear the snapping of bad plug wires. I'm pretty sure. I see that was off of there. That was right in contact with it, so that might have something to do with it. I just love those perfect length spark plug wires. Probably never find another set like them. Who asked you? What was I gonna do? Oh, I was gonna look at the thing. No, it's still not uh, very wide open. Well, it goes wide open at wide open throttle, I guarantee. I'm not gonna mount a camera under here to go find out though. <sighs> a couple of things to do. Oh yeah, a special treat. Well, you'll just have to wait till the next episode for that. Uh, hard to hold the camera and show you the butterfly in there at the same time. How can I do this? Maybe like that. Okay, so that's the bottom side. Nothing wrong there. So you do this. It's a high spec because you've got the taper on the pipe. And you've got the taper on the donut or on the uh got the taper on the heat riser. I know. A lot of you would just do what Kenny said. Just take it out of there. I ain't gonna. I just ain't gonna. Might as well not be restricted at all. After all, after all it is immeasurable. Ow. Parallel bolt shim. Yeah, if I can stop shaking. <laughs> Let's see how it goes. Oh, took the battery up first. Well, now. Missing a nut. Of course I am. Under the camera, of course. Scary, huh?